So boxing fan, this is Anner here to do another boxing analysis. This is a pretty big fight between Kid Chocolate versus Gabriel King Rosado or King Gabe Rosado, however you want to pronounce it. Um, you know, Kid Chocolate in being Peter Quillen. Uh, he's Brooklyn based, even though he said he uh, I believe grew up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. You know, he's always shouting out Floyd Mayweather. Uh, you know, his people is his papitos from Cuba. A lot of people don't know that. They think he's just you know, a normal African American male. Uh, he speaks Spanish fluently. Uh, Gay Rosado is a Puerto Rican American. So you have the rivalry there. You know, Puerto Rican American versus Cuban American. It's going to be a great, great fight. Um, you know, they're going to create war in that square circle and they go toe to toe. They're both very tall very uh, rangy, um, they both have power, they both have uh, intelligence in the ring, Gabe Rosado likes to box, you know, but he likes to fight too, in the middle rounds he likes to fight, um, Kid Chocolate, and he's pretty intelligent as well, he hasn't t taken too much punishment, I think the hardest punishment he took was by that, uh, that one guy from France, that one African guy from France, he had fought, um, he gave him his hardest fight and he passed the flying colors and knocked the guy out, you know, impressively. So Kid Chocolate is coming off with a pretty nice record, but we'll get to Gabe Rosado first. Uh, he's uh, six foot tall, you know, 74 inch reach, 27 years of age, uh, of age and, uh, you know, he's in the prime of his career, you know, from, from North Philly, same place as uh, Danny Swift Garcia, the great Danny Swift. Swift Garcia he was undefeated and uh, undisputed at 140 pounds. Um, Gary Rosado, you know, started his career late. Um, you know, one of the fights that he's known for is the Fernando Guerrero fight. I remember watching that fight on uh, Friday Night Fights. Uh, they, they threw down, it was a good fight. And uh, I believe Gary Rosado won, but they had Fernando Guerrero win. And that was just the beginning of him losing, you know, close, close, close decisions. Um, you know, the, the Fernando Guerrero was undefeated at that time, too, so you know how that goes, swaying with the judges and everything and whatnot. Uh, he jumped in the ring, being the proud, proud body, what that he is. Stepped in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. Wasn't the best idea at the time. But, you know, I believed in him, and everybody that was behind him believed in him, believed he could get it done. He didn't deny he, you know, put a beating on him, but I, I really feel he has a lot left in the tank, and he will be able to come back, and he has a chance, you know, he has another chance right here to show what he's made of at 154 pounds. Uh, well, you know what, I think this fight might be at 160. You guys let me know uh, if this fight's going to be at uh, 160. I think that, uh, you know, when it comes down to Kid Chocolate, he has a whole lot of momentum right now. You know, he's really, really, really looking sharp. And, I, and what I mean by sharp is he knows when to punch. His timing and accuracy is something, you know, that's special. You know, when he jabs and throws his straight right hand, it's not just uh, a normal jab straight right hand. He has bad intentions on his punches. He tries to get his opponent out of there with each punch. But they're smart and they're precise. Um, one thing that he does that I don't like, you know, is sometimes he has his hands kind of down and not all the way up. They kind of drop right here. And that's when you can get countered. And Gabe Rosado is a very good counter puncher as well. So I mean, especially when he has you on the ropes. Um, you know, when it comes to Kid Chocolate, his best asset is sitting back and boxing, but he is a killer. If he gets you hurt, he will get you out of there and throw many combinations. Usually, there are a lot of straight punches. He will throw a whole lot of straight punches at you. Um, in his last fight, like I said, with Fernando Guerrero, he did a great job. And uh, the guy from France I was talking about, his name is, uh, uh, I think, uh, Hassan Endam, uh, something like that. Anyway, like I said, that's the guy that he has, uh, you know, won a, uh, well, you know, he won a unanimous decision. I was wrong about that. He won a unanimous decision. Uh, he didn't knock out in down. But he knocked out Guerrero in seven rounds, and that's the guy that he was knocking down consecutively before he got, you know, stopped. 
You know, Guerrero's a warrior. He's not the type to lay down. You know, uh, guys from the Dominican Republic, they come to fight. You know, they come to fight. And uh, it just wasn't his night. You know, and they're friends. You know, they're amigos. And, uh, you know, there was no love lost after that fight. It's just the better man won. And uh, Kid Chocolate, he, he sometimes doesn't work the body as much, and that's something he needs to work on. If he's going to beat Gabe Rizzotto impressively, is working the body, getting Gabe Rizzotto tired. Because uh, from what I see, I see Rizzotto doesn't really like body punches, but who does, you know? Uh, he's going to be defending his WBO middleweight title, so it will be at 160 pounds. Um, I believe Gabe Rizzotto going up in weight is going to benefit him, not hurt him. Because he looks strong, you know, and, and built at that weight. And I think it's going to help him out more than hurt him. Um, let me break it down with the styles. They both like the box, so somebody's going to have to come forward. I believe the person going to be coming forward majority of the time will be Rosado. Uh, Peter Quillen will only, you know, Kitchak will only come forward once he knows you're hurt. You know, I mean, like, really put pressure on you. So Gary is going to be the Bull, the Matador, Peter Quillen. Uh, I see Peter Quillen doing his thing, winning the first four rounds in this fight. You know, Gabe Rizzotto might win a round somewhere in the fifth or sixth. And I don't know, I just see Kid Chocolate moving on, you know, like doing his thing, you know, and putting some real punishment on Gabe Rizzotto. Even though I like Gabe Rizzotto, you know, he's Puerto Rican American and everything, I don't know what he has left. And I'm just going to go with my intelligence and my intelligence telling me Kid Chocolate is the one who's steamrolling through the middleweight division on to you know, another title, a big title, uh, at 160 pounds. You know, he said he wants to unify the belts. That's one of his goals. You know, he wants to be an all-time great. You know, he has a lot to live up to, you know, <clears throat> being from a Cuban background. You know, Cuban boxers are some of the best boxers in the world. And they show time and time again, so he wants to be in that upper echelon of Cuban, you know, boxes. And uh, I see Gabe Rizzotto winning, like I said, about four rounds. He got eight rounds for um, Kid Chocolate. Kid Chocolate will win those eight rounds by being intelligent, using the generalship. Um, you know, I know he's going to be going for the knockout. Rizzotto really needs an impressive win, you know, a big knockout. He wants to stay on top and... Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, Gabe can do. He has the power, you know. He has that great left hook. And he has a great straight right hand. But it's gonna take more than that to, to, to knock out Kid Chai. He's gonna need many combinations, hard punches. Uh, you know, knowing where to put those punches at. And because Kid Chocolate has a good chin, very good chin. So you're gonna have to really come with your A game that night. So um, yeah, Kid Chocolate unanimous decision. You guys tell me what you think in the comment section below. And um, who do you think Kid Chocolate should face next? I know the promotional company is probably not going to allow it. But maybe they will. K2 Promotions and uh, Golden Boy work together and get it done. Kid Chocolate, if, if, if Triple G beats Curtis Stevens, which I think he might do, but Curtis Stevens is a beast. Who knows? He might knock out Triple G and fuck up the whole round robin they got going on in the middle of the video. And it would be an amazing, amazing fight in the Barclays. Triple G versus Kid Chocolate or Kid Chocolate versus uh, Curtis Stevens. You know, that's Curtis Stevens' home. You know, he's from the hard streets of Brooklyn. So. Man, that would be just awesome to see. Like, either, either one. Um, middleweight division is pretty stacked. You know, Sergio Martinez coming back next year. Uh, he's still going to have to fight one of those top tier you know, for one of his last fights. So I believe he's at the very tier end of his career as well. Uh, so, like I said, like I said, let me know who you think Kid Chocolate should fight after he wins against uh, you know, King Gabe Rizal. Anyways, I will get back to you with more boxing analysis and peace.